Welcome everyone to the Better Love Movement podcast, where you will finally learn how to intentionally do dating and relationships right. My name is Anita Stoudmeyer, and I'm a licensed professional therapist and your personal love mentor. I've worked with thousands of singles and couples, giving them the skills needed to attract and keep the amazing love they desire. It's my heart's work to help people to get the skills needed to not only become the very best versions of themselves, but to help them grow and evolve emotionally and relationally. You can absolutely have the romantic relationship of your dreams. Come and let me show you how. back this week again with another podcast episode. This train just keeps rolling. And you know what? We are rolling towards 100 podcast episodes. So I am going to have a big, huge giveaway for our 100th episode of the podcast. We are about, I don't know, maybe eight weeks away, eight or nine weeks away from the 100th episode So stay tuned. If you have been listening to my podcast from the beginning, or if you're new to the podcast, stay tuned for the 100th episode that's going to be coming up here in the next month or two, okay? But today, we are in episode 91. I am answering a question from a listener who DM'd me through Instagram, and she had a long description to her question But I boiled it down to this. So she wanted to know, what's the difference between being my authentic self and being toxic? So you can be your authentic self within a relationship without being toxic. That's what we're going to talk about today. So in her description, she was telling me about um, the gentleman that she's dating and has been dating for about six months now. And she talked about, you know, wanting a relationship where she could feel comfortable, where she could be her real self and not have to um, kind of put on this show or wear this mask all the time. And so she talked about um, there was something that he did or said that upset her and she got really angry and she yelled and she threw something Um And he just, you know, completely shut down and then he pulled away for a few days and she wasn't quite sure, you know, what happened. You know, I I feel like we've been dating long enough that, you know, I can just be my real self. I can be my authentic self. And if I get upset or angry or if I'm moody or if I'm, you know, snappy, um, that that to me is a part of being with a person, you know, being with a real woman and just, you know, we have our ups and downs and what's the big deal. And, you know, maybe this is a red flag if this guy can't handle me or can't handle, um, you know, when I'm moody or when I get angry or if I get frustrated or yell or curse or, you know, whatever it is I do when I'm frustrated or angry or annoyed. And so there is a saying There is a quote that says, if you can't handle me at my worst, then you don't deserve to have me at my best. And so this is what that quote is um, implying, that we should be able to kind of be on our worst behavior. We should be able to display bad behavior. And if a person really loves us or cares about us, they should put up with it. They should take it. And so if you know anything about me, you already know what I'm going to say. You already know (laughs) that at no point, you know, um, are we allowed to just be a jerk. At no point are we allowed to be an a-hole. You know, are we allowed to have behaviors that are toxic? And yes, some of us do. Ladies, uh, Let me pull your coattail because I've seen it myself. I've seen it firsthand where your idea of being comfortable in a relationship or being your authentic self or your real self is being, you know, a nasty person. 
is saying any and everything out of your mouth. I have couples now that I work with where it surprises me. Like it kind of shocks me. The things that happen when they're in a fight or in an argument or a disagreement, like I'm shocked. I mean, I don't display that I'm shocked, but I'm thinking to myself, what? Like, why is this going on? Why is this okay? These behaviors are not okay. And they are doing things like, you know, screaming, yelling, spitting, throwing things, hitting each other with things that they're throwing, grabbing, shoving. Um, and I mean, the things they are saying, like the things that they're telling me that they're saying to each other. I'm like, no, this is not being comfortable. This is not being your authentic self. This is being an a-hole. Like this is being a jerk. This is being a nasty person. And here's the thing I want to tell you that um, I have evolved, you know, I own it. I have evolved. I haven't always been this woman and I'm proud of the progress that I've made. I'm continuing to grow. I'm continuing to learn. I'm continuing to heal. Okay. Because the word on the street is that, oh, you got to work on yourself and get a hundred percent healed. No, you don't. You're not going to until you die. That's not going to happen. So I get it, you know, we're going to make some missteps. I just want to make sure that these missteps that you're making in your healing journey are not huge. They're not blatant. They're not, um, you know, these big, big uh, missteps that you're making like over and over and over, like the obvious ones. No, you shouldn't be making those mistakes over and over and over. That's like, that's like touching and anger, right? I don't have any toleration for touching and anger, but let's say six months in, you did, you know, throw something, it hit your partner, or they, uh, you know, restrained you or however, right? So maybe it wasn't a full on closed fist hit, but they restrained you because you got a little rowdy, you bumped your chest with them or whatever, and they restrained you. That should never happen again. That should not be a regular thing happening in your relationship, in your arguments or disagreements or fights. That should not happen again. Like there has to be an understanding that, okay, that happened that one time. Um, we're, we're relatively new to each other. We're still learning each other. But that should not be happening over and over and over. We should not be calling each other out of our name. We should not be saying horrible, hurtful things about our mothers, our fathers, our children, you know, the size of a man's penis. I mean, no, no, there are some things that you can say, ladies, that is completely unacceptable. And guess what? I'm not going to... Uh, by the excuse that you're mad. You're not a, a, an animal. You're not completely like mad as in out of your mind. You have a prefrontal cortex that says, you know what? I can, uh, I can control myself. I can think through or I can do things that would help me to calm myself down, soothe myself. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. But you are not an animal. You are not completely just out of your mind just because you're upset. And if that's the case, you're not ready to be in a relationship. Like if you can't monitor your behavior to keep it civil, like if you can't be civil, if you're an animal when you're fighting, then you're not ready to be in a relationship. You got a lot of work to do. Okay, the rest of us are out here working on ourselves and we're getting healed and we're growing, but we got sense in our head. But if you're telling me that I can't help myself, I just go there, I black out, then you don't have any business being in a relationship. If you want me to be 100% honest, you're not ready at all because you're not using common sense. And if you're over the age of 25 and you're listening to this and you're still you know, just yelling and screaming and cursing and slapping and hitting and throwing and spitting. No, 
You have no business being in a relationship. You're not ready. You are completely immature. So that has nothing to do with being your authentic self. And then you have to ask yourself, is your authentic self just a nasty person? Just a horrible person? Who would want to sign up for that? No, being my authentic self is um, three months into a relationship, I am not going to, let me think of something. I'm not going to eat foods. I'm not going to eat certain foods in front of a man that I'm just getting to know. I'm going to be honest. I'm probably not going to eat ribs. I'm not going to eat wings. You know, I want to get to that place where I'm comfortable doing that, but I'm probably not going to do that initially because I don't feel super comfortable with this man who I've only known a few weeks or a few months, you know, so I'm probably not going to do that. I'm probably not going to um, let him see me when I'm doing my self-care Sunday, right? I'm probably not going to do that, which is like a whole thing. So he's not going to come over and see me do my whole self-care Sunday routine. That's not going to happen. Um, there's lots of things, right? I'm going to have more tolerance or more patience initially and maybe as we get closer and get a little more comfortable i may express my annoyance at things that maybe i didn't in the first few months but i am still going to be civil i am still going to be kind you know i'm not going to just lose it and start screaming and yelling and throwing things no no but there are things going on in relationships that it's unacceptable. It's toxic behavior. And if it is a pattern, meaning it's happening over and over and over under this guise that I just get so mad, I just black out, I don't know what I do, I just say this or that. I mean, it's it's just unacceptable. Like, I don't even have a response to it. When couples tell me this, we got into this fight again, I spit on him, he threw, he threw a drink on me. I'm thinking... I mean, what do you want me to say to that? Like, all of this is completely unacceptable. And you all have been doing this for a year or two or three. No, no, you have got to step back and do some work. Both of you do. And then the second question you need to ask yourself is, should I be with this person? Is this a good fit for me? Because that this is not healthy. This is not normal, and I'm putting air quotes. This is not normal. This is not healthy. People don't, you know, when they disagree or get mad or something happens, they don't turn into a monster. Like, I want you to remember, even when you're mad, that this is your person. This is a person you chose. This is a person you love. This is a person you care about. And you're going to go there? Like, seriously? Come on. That's what's happening in, in my mind all the time. Like, when I'm with my person and they do things, they do things that irritate me. Oh, man, they do things. They do things even though unintentionally. Nine times out of ten, it's unintentional. So the first thing I say is, this is unintentional. As annoying as it is, as frustrating as it is, or as hurt or angry as I feel, I'm going to err on the nine times out of 10, this person is not doing this on purpose to get this result. That's the first thing that comes into my head as a civil thinking person. Okay. Then I'm going to, and this is still my person. Like I don't hate this person. This is a person that I chose to be in relationship with. I love this person. I care about this person. So I'm not just going to go into a fight to destroy them. That, no, like, no, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand this um, idea that I just have to go into this disagreement or argument seeking to destroy this person. And maybe, you know, that's me always seeking that higher, you know, just, just that higher level of, yeah, that we go high, you know, I, that's, that's just who I am. I'm not going to get down in the gutter with you. I'm not. And if, if you do, and that's what you're used to, or that's, you know, you're not for me. 
that's the first thing I'm going to think. Like, if you go there and I'm like, oh, okay, that's what we're doing. We're calling each other out of our name. We're, we're saying horrible things about our family or about, you know, whatever, sexual prowess or something. I don't know. Oh, you know, that's that's a huge red flag to me. I am not with the right person because I'm not going to do that. And let me tell you something else. A lot of people will do this these behaviors and then when it's all over, like when the smoke clears, they want to act like nothing happened. They want to actually go back to being in love and being all lovey-dovey and yet maybe the other person doesn't respond that way. And they're actually like, what's the problem? Like, what's going on? The fight is over. No, that's toxic. That is utterly toxic to say and do the most hurtful, mean things. And then you're going to add insult to injury and act like nothing happened. That is, that's very toxic behavior. So this is layered. There's lots of layers here, but no. We have to learn healthy skills. We have to learn how to disagree in love. We have to learn how to resolve conflict. We have to remember that if we're in a relationship with this person, we chose them. We wanted them. Okay? And so we got to act like it all the time. Even when we're not feeling great. Even when we're hurt or sad or lonely or frustrated or angry. We chose this person. And so I would hope that you could express how you're feeling because that's, that's what I want you all to do. Ladies, I feel, I felt I'm feeling, right? And you can express anger this way, frustration, hurt, sadness, confusion, like there's thousands of emotions. This is how you're going to express them. You're not going to go in with the, with the, um, idea that you're going to attack this person. You're going to tell them all about themselves. No, you're going to express how whatever happened made you feel or how it's making you feel right now. And then you're going to say, what do you think about that? Okay, so you are going to practice this skill and this takes practice. I get it. Nobody came out of their womb, the mother's womb doing this. And dare I say it, you learned the wrong way to do it from your family, from other relationships. Like you have more practice doing it the wrong way. But here's the thing. If you're a grown up, if you're an adult, if you are above the age of 25, you can decide to start practicing doing it the right way, doing it the kind way, doing it the loving way. Because you love this person. You care about this person. And here's the thing. I don't care what they bring. I don't care what they bring to the argument. I don't care if they bring a knife. They, they bring a gun. They bring a Uzi. I will not respond in kind. I will reflect on if I should be with this person. That's what many of you fear. You fear asking the hard question which is, should I be with this person? If this is how this person acts when we're mad or in a fight with each other, and there is no such, there, there is no low blow. There is no line that you don't cross. The real question you have to ask yourself is, should I be with this person? Like, mm, this is not okay. That's the first thing I ask. You know, there are certain things that if my partner does these things, I'm done. I'm good. And it hurts. Like, I am not sitting here telling you that if I have to walk away from a person, I'm not destroyed. I am destroyed. And then I am building myself back up. But I am not going to get in any more toxic cycles with anyone, period. Not anyone, not a family member, not a friend, my children, any partner I have, no one. I'm done with that. That part of me is over. We're either going to have healthy, loving exchanges. They may be tense, right? I like to describe it as tense. So 
my partner and I had a tense exchange. That's how I like to describe it, right? It may be tense, but it will not be just all out disrespectful. It will not cross certain lines. It will not be touching and anger. It will not be cursing, calling me out of my name, throwing things at me, spitting on me, which I think is the height of disrespect. That will never happen because if it happens toward me, I am immediately saying, this is not the relationship for me. And I'm not going to respond in kind. I'm just not because I am over the, that's like 10 bridges ago. I have crossed 10 bridges to get here. I am definitely not going back. And I'm not going to sit on my high horse and say I haven't. Oh, the 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 20 year old Anita, 20, 21, 22, 23, 25, you know, 27. Yeah, I, it was some cutting up there. 30? Yeah. 31? Mm, okay. There was some cutting up. There was some acting out. There was some aggression meeting aggression. But that is a whole nother story. That is a that is a, a story of healing and restoration with childhood stuff and you know daddy wounds and all that other stuff. Okay. So that's the work that had to be done. And once I got that work done, once I started to just consciously say, this is the type of relationship I want to have. Like this is the type of person I want to be with, this is the type of man I want, the type of relationship I want to have, I then started going in that direction. That's it. I help couples identify what type of relationship do you want to have? What type of person do you want? What type of person don't you want? What type of person do you need? And once you identify that, then you go in that direction. Anything else is like you want to get to New York and you're driving to Florida. Why would you do that? Head north, head toward New York. You're telling me I want to go to New York. Then don't go toward Florida. Don't go toward Texas. Don't go toward, you know, Utah. Go north to New York. You have to walk it out. It's not enough to say, yes, I want a healthy, happy, you know, um, long-term relationship and I don't want, you know, the, the fighting with screaming and cursing and I don't want things thrown and I don't want hitting or slapping. You know, it's one thing to say that, but you actually have to do it. You have to do it. And with practice, see, this is where the practice comes in. You're going to get practice in feeling your feelings because there's nothing wrong with your emotions. It's what you're doing with them. It's what you're doing with your emotions. I had to learn this the hard way. I was entitled to be angry about a lot of things. There are a lot of things in the world to be angry about. But I was not entitled to curse and scream and yell and slap and hit and break windows and slash tires and all that other nonsense. I was not. And if I continued to make those choices, I was going to have negative consequences as a response. And so I didn't want those negative consequences. So I no longer made those negative choices. I made positive choices and got better consequences. And more than anything, I learned how to walk away. I learned how to walk away from situations and circumstances that that had that behave, that those behaviors in it. I do not engage people who engage in those behaviors. I just don't. I just don't. So I want to get everyone to this place. And dare I say it, I want to get you, listener, I want to get you there too. I want to get you there sooner than it took me. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because I want some of my 20-year-olds, 25-year-olds, 30-year-olds to say, you know what? That's not the relationship I want to have. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to figure out how to express myself and my feelings in a way that doesn't involve the low blows, the cursing, the slapping, the spitting, or whatever else. Like, I don't want that, you know? That's what I want for you. And I also want you to have the courage that if people bring that to you 
and you make it clear, this is not okay. This doesn't feel good. This doesn't work for me. That you have the courage to walk away. That you leave them alone, all the way alone, as I like to say. Okay? So, yes, ladies, you may be your real self. That's going to happen. That's going to come out. Remember, you're going to keep a certain amount of mystery, though. Your man doesn't need to know everything. And that's not about secrecy or anything like that. That's just, you know what? If you weren't there coming out of my mother's womb with me till now, there's a whole lot of stuff about me. You're just not going to know. And that's that's okay. That's called your life. You're entitled to your life and your experiences. He's not going to know everything about you. And I don't believe he should. I think you need to keep some mystery to yourself. Don't get so comfortable that your man is knowing everything about you, you're telling him every little thing and you're doing your self-care Sunday in front of him and you're he's watching you shave your legs, shave your underarms and all this. No, that's that's too much. You, you're getting too comfortable. There should always be a little spark and spice and that sexual tension that you don't know everything about me. That's how you keep the sexual tension going. And, and space, we talked about warmth and we talked about space. Those are the things that we need for long-term success in a relationship. So you're going to give space. But yes, be your authentic self. That's, I believe that's a feminine, that's a necessary feminine skill is that I want you to be your authentic self. I want you to hone these feminine qualities that I'm teaching you and I want you to be yourself right? And if yourself is, is cursing and yelling and screaming and spitting and snapping and coming home mad from, from work or somebody else did something to you and taking it out on your partner, then that's something you need to rethink. Like you need to rethink some things about you and ask yourself, why am I taking this out on the person I say I love, the person I care about, the person I chose, and they didn't even cause the problems. Like what's going on inside of me that I'm not able to emotionally regulate myself. And we're gonna do a whole nother podcast about that. That is, we're gonna talk about that and we're gonna talk about self-soothing because folks actually, I mean, I hear it all the time. It's like they have feelings or emotions and they want other people to manage them. No. That is nobody else's job but yours. Like you are entitled to your feelings and your emotions and your thoughts and your opinions, but it is, it's yours to manage. No one was put here on earth to meet all of your needs. Your parents took care of all of your needs when you were born because you were helpless. You were a baby. But let me tell you something. Once you turn 18 and you're legally not their responsibility, I'm sorry to tell you, but no, not them, not anybody. You've got to meet your needs and you will get into relationships with others and there will be an exchange of meeting needs. That's perfectly fine. That is okay if you are both consenting partners and you consent to, okay, I'd like to get into this relationship. I'd like to meet some of your needs. I'd like to have some of my needs met. That's perfectly fine. But I'm going to be frank with you. No one was put here on earth to meet all of your needs. You are responsible for that. Don't put that on another person. Don't put all your needs on your partner. You are going to be disappointed every single time. So don't even do it. Well, we're going to talk about um, self-soothing and we're going to talk about emotional regulation, maybe in the next podcast, because that is a topic that is long overdue. I'm seeing too many people, too many women who are just completely out of control. And then they tell me, well, you know, it's hormones or it's, you know, it's because I'm a woman, I'm emotional and I have all these feelings and this and that. Okay, but again, you're not an animal and I understand the hormonal piece. I, we can, we're even gonna talk a little bit about that, like how you can um, balance your hormones in such a way where you are less um, volatile or less moody, we're going to talk about all of that. But please don't make another person responsible for 
you know, either making you feel better or um, soothing your anxiety about something or women who go into relationships and say, oh, I have trust issues. So I need a man to do this, this and this for me to feel trust. No, no, that's called you. That's called you need to heal that. You need to work on that because no one should be fully and completely controlled by you in order for you to feel good and loving and trusting if they are not doing anything inappropriate, if they are not cheating or, you know, doing anything inappropriate, then that's called you, your issue that you need to work on. You need to self-soothe. But I see it all the time. Lady saying, well, I need him to call me more. I need him to text me more. I need him to do this. And I need him to be at home at this time. And I need him to, come on, come on, ladies, come on. We got to grow up. And we got to learn how to soothe ourselves. We have to get the skills we need to be our best, not relying on anyone outside of us. And again, if you see behaviors from your man that are completely inappropriate, okay, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about, um, you know, him calling you at five, leaving work and saying, I'm on my way home and getting home at 11. We're not talking about that, okay? Yes, you're gonna have to address that. You called me and told me you were on your way home and, and here you are six hours later. What did you do between work and now? Yes, you have a right to hold him accountable. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about just, you know, I'm coming home, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and, you know, I'm where I'm supposed to be, but I'm still feeling, you know, anxious. I'm still worried. I'm still, and okay, well then you need to figure that out. You need to work on that. And that's that's just honest. I'm just being honest with you. I've been there. I've been there. And I realize, you know what? This is not about him. This is this is not his to manage. I have to manage this. I've got to figure this out. I have gone through this in several relationships. And now I get it. It is up to me to feel good. It's up to me to say, you know what? Whether this man is faithful to me or not, and like I said, ladies, there are no guarantees. When you get in these relationships, there's just no guarantees, right? We just don't know. Now, I say you can um, make an informed decision. And so remember, you're qualifying. I believe that if a woman chooses well, if she qualifies a man well, there's be there's a better chance for a good outcome. So that's the part a lot of people miss. They don't qualify. They don't choose well. And so, yes, they get into something and then that person acts up or becomes who they really are. And they're like, what? what's happening? Why is this happening? Because you didn't, you didn't vet this person. But outside of that, you've got to manage yourself and your, your emotions and your feelings. I believe when you're with a partner that they protect your feelings or emotions, like they don't do things on purpose to trigger you or to, you know, cause these feelings to come up. They're, they're protective of it, but they, they're not in charge of healing it. Like that's not their job. That's your job. You've got to heal these things, these traits that you have inside of you. You've got to do that work on your own. Okay. So if there are toxic traits that you have and that's coming out, you know, six months, nine months into the relationship, and you call that being your authentic self or keeping it real or whatever, right? I want you to really check that because if you're getting mad or angry about something and you're just losing it and, oh, and then on top of that, if you want to come back and act like it's no big deal, oh man, all of that is beyond toxic. So you've got to check yourself. Yes, I want you to be who you are. I want you to have an intimacy with this person and be comfortable with them. That's perfectly fine. But I also want you to be kind. Like be kind, display a kindness to them that I believe everyone should to someone that they love. Okay, so that's even my, my kids. You know, I'm not gonna, they, they may do something or say something and I'm going to hold them accountable, but I'm going to do it in a way that's kind. I'm not just going to be nasty. I'm not just going to say a bunch of crazy stuff on top of what the issue is just because I can, just to shoot, you know, just to 
take shots at people. No, that's not being kind. That's not keeping it on the topic at hand. So that looks like kitchen sinking, right? Where you're just pulling all these things, all these issues, all these problems. Oh, and definitely from the past, because we love to do that. We say once something happened once, even if it's not happening now, I can bring it in. I can bring it into this conversation because it adds validity to what I'm talking about. No, no. If your partner did something a year ago and they haven't done it since, no, sorry, you don't. You don't. Everyone has the right to grow and change. And so again, what are you doing? You bringing that up over and over and over, yeah, that's that's really toxic. That's not helpful. So check all of this. I hope all of this was helpful. And let me tell you, I'm giving you this information from my own life, from 18 to like 32, okay? 32, 33, I was what my grandmother calls a sapphire. And, you know, no emotional control, no emotional regulation. And when I started on this journey, I realized, you know what, it is possible. I'm acting like it just isn't possible to control myself or control what I do or control my thoughts or what I say. It's possible to do all of that. It is truly possible. And with practice, because that's the key, you actually have to practice it. You have to do it over and over and over. You have to reach for it over and over and over. And then that becomes the new norm. So short of someone breaking into my house and trying to, you know, murder everyone in here, sure, there's probably a dark shadow side of me that would come out if that happened. But for the most part, I am able to live in the part of me, my higher self, okay, that is kind, that is controlled, that is able to um, be civil, and be, you know, fairly logical. So I'm able to marry my heart and my head together. That really is the goal. We want to be able to marry our heart and our head together. So men may be on the side of being totally logical, right? They're in their head, they're totally logical. And women may be more on the side of their feelings and their emotions. And this is how I feel. And doesn't matter why I just feel this way, right? But the intention is for us to balance those two. I respect the fact that men and women are different and that we're kind of both that way. But I always tell men and women, I want you to learn how to balance those two. I want the men to consider the feelings and emotions. And I want the women to consider the logic and kind of balance those two things together. That's the sweet spot. But it's okay. We can respect the fact that, you know, men are tend to be more logical and women tend to be more feeling or more emotional. So that's okay. But yes, it is possible to be your authentic self uh, without being toxic. And if these toxic behaviors that I just named, like if you hear yourself in any of those behaviors I just said, then I, I want you to really take stock and really do some work on that because I'll be frank with you, like that's not your authentic self. I don't believe that's who you are. I believe that's the lower part of yourself. I believe that's the wounded part of yourself. That's what I believe. I believe that the true, healthy, higher part of yourself, your true self, your God self is better than that. You're better than that. But a lot of us have been programmed and wounded and traumatized into doing other behaviors. And so once you recognize there is this part inside of you that's higher, that's better, I want you to reach for that. I want you to start going in that direction and healing those wounds and then practicing the skills to help you become that higher part of yourself. Everyone has that in them. Everyone's capable of that. That's what I want for you. So take stock. I hope this episode helped you to possibly identify if 
you are one of these women who says, well, you know, the screaming and the yelling and all the other stuff I do when we're fighting or I'm hurt or, you know, annoyed or frustrated or on my period or whatever. Well, that's just my authentic self. That's just me keeping it real. Uh, okay. But really take stock here. Am I guilty of some of these things that, you know, yeah, I should be able to still be kind. I should be able to have some emotional regulation. So we will talk about that in our next episode because that is a long overdue episode. And I'm sure that's not going to be everyone's favorite because I'm going to, you know, I'm going to bring you some, that jagged little pill, some hard truth, but it's something everybody needs. We're going to talk a little more about emotional intelligence and how important that is to the success of your relationships and your life. Like people who are emotionally intelligent, they are successful at work. They are successful in friendships and relationships um, with their children. I mean, they're just successful people all the way around. The higher you score in emotional intelligence, the better your life is. So we'll talk more about that. I am excited to do a little research before uh, next week's episode about that. And I hope this was helpful as always. I share my journey with you and I share my experience with you because it is my life's purpose. It is my most passionate thing that, you know, the thing that I'm most passionate about to help people become their higher selves, to help them become self-actualized. I really believe that's why God put me here is to speak to you and help you to step into the person that God wants you to be, that he knows you already are. That's what excites me about working with people. And especially in the area of relationships, because I know when our relationships are good, when we are happy, when we are in love, when we feel at peace, when we believe we have a good, healthy person, everything else in our life gets that much better. It really, really does. And it does not mean that life becomes perfect because the world right now is sucking. It's, it is so, it is so difficult. Guys, I mean, even me, and I'm the most optimistic person I know, but it, this has been the most difficult year. I, oh man, this year has been something. But just imagine if you had that partner who was there beside you to love you, to care for you, to spend time with you, to cuddle you, to hold you and kiss you, and to talk with you, man, ugh, just thinking about it, you know, it just makes me feel good. Just thinking about it, like I can get through this year. I'm going to be okay. It This year sucks, and yet I have my person. It, it just makes it that much more worthwhile. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing because I want everybody to have that. And I know that the way human beings are wired, they're going to reach for it. Like people, even the most hardcore man, oh, I don't need a woman. You know, I'm MGTOW, red pill, whatever. I don't want a woman. I don't need a woman. Every person wants love. Every person wants that romantic partner. They want to feel those feelings. And most people are scared to death. Most people are broken. If that if they're not having that, that's why. It's not because they don't want it. It's because they're afraid. They are fearful and they are broken. They are traumatized. So I want to bring back love. Real love, genuine love, true love. It exists. It is timeless. I don't care what year it is. Biologically and hormonally, men and women are different, and that will always be. And so I want to teach people to respect that and to accept that and that that's okay. And with that knowledge, with these skills that I'm teaching you, you're able to have a good, healthy, happy relationship. So that is why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm so passionate about this work. Because, man, this year has been hard. I've seen some things. I've seen some tragic things. Um, I've seen some couples that I felt like, you know, they were going to make it forever and they didn't. 
Um, we are in this gender war and that is very disheartening to me, but I am going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep advocating for love. That's what I, that's my new title. When people say, well, what do you do? I am a love advocate and I will be that until the day I die because doesn't matter what year it is. Doesn't matter what's going on in the world. Love wins. Love wins. I hope this episode was helpful to you. And as always, stay open to love. Thank you for listening to today's podcast episode. If you are enjoying this podcast, please leave me a five-star rating and review. Your ratings and reviews help me to continue to bring you more great content. Head on over to YouTube and check out the Better Love Movement channel. There's more video content there and you can subscribe to be notified when a new video is posted. If you have a question that you would like to have answered on the podcast or in a YouTube video, please send it to me at info at betterlovemovement.com. You can also connect with me directly on the Magnify app to have your dating and relationship questions answered. That's M-A-G-N-I-F-I, and it's available on iOS and Android. You get your first five minutes for free. So give me a call and let's chat.